The new masking panel in the latest Lightroom update is a complete game changer. Using the power of AI, we are now able to selectively edit specific parts of the photo, like the sky or the subject, in just a few clicks. In this video, I'm going to walk you through these new masking features and demonstrate how to dramatically speed up your workflow, as well as increase the accuracy of your selective edits. So the first thing that you're going to notice is when you navigate to the develop panel with this latest Lightroom update, you're going to notice that the old graduated filter, the selective adjustment brush, and the radial filter tools are now gone and have been replaced with this new masking button. So once you click the masking button, it's going to take you to some options here, which you can make two different AI mask selections, which is select subject and select sky. And then you also have your traditional tools that you're familiar with, which is the adjustment brush, the linear gradient, and the radial filter. And then also you can do global adjustments to color range, luminance range, and depth range. And just to note that this Lightroom update is coming on October 26th. At the time of this filming, that is tomorrow. So it should be out and that will be for Lightroom version 11. 11. So in order to demonstrate how to use these new masking tools, I think the best way to kind of explain it is to edit some photos, some realistic situations that we may encounter in our editing process. So the first is going to be a portrait example. And I shot this one at 1 over 4,000 a second at 1.4, but at ISO 160 to try to get a lot of dynamic range for this photo. So let's just show you kind of like what we're working with. You can bring up the exposure and we can get all the data back in the shadows of the subject in the foreground as well as bring it back for the sky. So let's try to use the kind of new masking tools to kind of bring out the most that we can out of this photo. So first things first is I'm going to apply a preset uh, to the photo just to kind of get it to where I want started and just kind of warm it up just a little bit. Um, probably right about here. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up the masking tool panel and I'm going to select a subject and let's see how this does. So once you click it, it's going to start loading up and it's going to selectively go around the edges of the... <laughs> so even before I was able to explain it, it already finished. So it goes around the hair um, and it does a really good job of, you know, not having to go in the middle of these gaps. It's, it's still like a little bit of... Um, adjustment that you can do to get rid of some of it but it's it's really 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 good for how quick that it does it so um, and now we can see like you can basically adjust the exposure of just the subject and this is this is kind of unrealistic but you can ad adjust the exposure of just the subject very 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 quickly and what's cool is that uh, instead of just only doing the select subject, you can kind of combine this with other tools like intersect and subtract to make a very unique combination of um, selections. So here, let's um, actually invert the mask. So if we, we click, this is the masking group. If we click here, go to the select subject, which builds up this mask, then we're going to press invert. What it's going to do is select everything else outside of just the subject. And then what we can do is we can um, bring down the exposure of everything like that. And you can increase it like that as well. But um, as you can see is that we want to kind of separate the, the background and the foreground from each other as far as the sky and the beach. So let's do something one more. So now that we have that inverted, let's actually subtract the sky from this um, mask. And then now we can basically just adjust just the the foreground right here very quickly. So you can just, just do that right here, adjust the foreground, and then we can make a new mask to select just the sky. And now we can play with the, um, just the, the exposure of the sky only. And then we can warm up the sky right here. Like so. And then if we make another mask just for the subject. Like 
now we can dial in the exposure of the subject right here. It's a little bit too much. And as you have all these different groups, it can start getting confusing. So you can actually rename this. So this is subject. This is sky. And this is foreground. Let's see. Maybe in this one, we can actually get rid of intersect this with a linear gradient so that we can just kind of get this right here. Just the... There you go. So it can kind of fall off a little bit into the beach. There you go. Now it's a little bit localized just on these rocks here. And we'll go back and globally adjust some of this stuff. So we'll kind of bring this up, the overall exposure, and bring down the highlights. And then go back in here, and then we can bring back the sky just a tad. Just get some dynamic range back in the sky. Then warm up the photo overall. Maybe bring the subject down just a little bit. Here's before and after. And going through, we can show all the different um, selective adjustments. So we have just a subject adjustment, just the sky adjustment, and just the foreground adjustment. So this is pretty awesome to be able to play with um, for portraits, for high dynamic range scenes. but. I think one thing that we're all wondering is like, how does the AI tool actually work for non-human subjects? Because I think portraiture is probably the one example that everyone's going to use for this type of tool. So let's try to edit some ring photos. Um, and the first thing I'm gonna do is drop in my preset and we're gonna go with this one. And then let's just edit the photo a little bit first. So bring up the exposure bring down the highlights a little bit, and then warm it up. All right, looking pretty, this is looking pretty solid right here, but we wanna test out this tool, so we'll, let's click select subject and see how it does. So I don't know if it'll work, <laughs> and it, it worked pretty dang well. Yeah, so it selected around the rings and even got it on the reflection, which I think is kinda cool, so we can sharpen up that reflection. Um, and let's start playing with the exposure here so we can kind of increase the brightness and the clarity of this um, these rings. And then let's see, we'll bring up the clarity here and the texture and bump up the exposure just a little bit. So that's looking awesome. Um, and before when I used to use these tools, I would go in and just decrease the overall exposure and then go back and increase the select the other part of it. But instead now what I can do is just select the subject again in a new mask and then just invert it um, by going, going through here. And now I have a adjustment layer just for the background area. So now I can just dial in the whole foreground area here, maybe increase the contrast a little bit by bringing up the highlights and the contrast. And then let's warm up the surrounding area a little bit more. 15, there you go. And then if you wanted to just play with just the foreground by itself, um, we can do the same thing again. So select subject. Now let's invert this. And then we'll um, intersect this mask with a linear gradient. So we're going to bring this up here. And I want to capture just like below this half of where the reflection is. So it can make the reflection stand out more. 
And now this is just doing just the bottom half, not having the subject in it. So now we can now you can adjust just where the reflection is, which is pretty <laughs> it's pretty amazing. So now we can if you wanted to brighten it up to make it stand out more, but in this case I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit, make it more subtle. Bring up the shadows just a tad. Cool. And now I'm just gonna fix the crap a little bit. A little bit diagonal something like that so going back into the masking tools again you can this is just the foreground this is everything else and here is just the subject looking at that one let's bring this down just a little bit all right so as you can see, like we're building in these different combinations of selections inverting subtracting and adding, you can do all these different ways. You can probably do it in different orders to get the same result, but that's the beauty of Lightroom and photo editing is you can go different ways to get what you want to get. Um, but this makes it so much quicker than having to use the adjustment brush, erasing things, adding the gradient, erasing things. It just took a lot of time and you couldn't stack them together really cleanly, but now you can. So um, I think the last question we're all thinking is, does this work for kind of like landscape and cityscape type photos? Um, and I haven't tried it yet, so this will be the first time that I'm trying it here. Um, so we're going to add in a preset, and let's just dial in the initial edit. And I, for me, I, what I want to do is try and separate out the foreground and the sky a little bit. Okay. And let's change the horizon. There you go. And now what we're going to do is add a select sky and see how that kind of gets everything. Oh, I noticed that it missed out right here. How about we reset it? Okay. So looking at that, <laughs> I've just noticed that depending on certain photos, it may be better to add your select sky, select subject mask first before you actually edit the photo and start changing the tonal ranges. As you can see here, um, the select sky gets closer to the bottom um, as opposed to when I did the add sky here. And I, if you see that, like it didn't get that part. So maybe this that, that's just something to learn is that um, you want to apply the mask first before you do any edit. So now let's go in and edit the photo and then come back to that mask. All right. So now that we're going back in here, now we have the um, sky here. And now we can just do some fine tuning of the highlights and the exposure, maybe a little bit of warmth here. And then I'm going to do another mouse with the sky. And let's invert it. That way. And then now we can just do just the foreground a little bit. I'm just going to add a touch, just a touch of light here. Not nothing too much. But it should make a significant difference. Maybe too much shadows here. Just a pop of light here. And I think I might decrease the sky exposure a little bit more. And if you don't know what these masking kind of like icons are looking like, the white area is where the adjustment's gonna be applied and the black area is where it's masked out and it's not applied. So you can see that this is a sky or you can, you know, always rename these for organization purposes like that so that you can go sky, adjust that, and the water, adjust that. And by all means, I'm not a landscape photographer, so I don't do a lot of selective adjustments to the landscape photos that I take, but if you are, I've got some friends who are landscape photographers and they're super juiced for this feature because they can go in and edit the clarity of just the water, add some sharp you know, softness to the sky or something like that. Whatever you wanna do, the world is your oyster. <laughs> 
I don't even say that. Whatever you want to do, kind of like you have the freedom to do that and you have the power to do it. And it's very quick as opposed to the old Lightroom where you had to do, you probably had to go to Photoshop to make these selective edits. Um, now going into Photoshop is not going to be as frequent as a task because you can do all these cool selective edits very, very quickly in this latest Lightroom update. So please, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, please subscribe for more Fujifilm or photography videos every single week. And if that's too long for you, please give me a follow at at photo on Instagram as I'm dropping new tips, tricks, and tutorials every single day. That's it for me. Remember to get out, go shoot, and I'll catch you all in the next one.